Okay, so here's the next video about getting started. Later, we'll have the initial test run. But before I do this, we have to review first all the warning labels. And it's given here. This is one uh, label that we have. It says hot steam from steam release valve can cause burns. Um, this is the lid of the pot and the uh, steam release valve is this one so hot steam is coming out from this this area so do not place hand over this area nor your face or any part of your body or your skin so never put them over this area where you have the steam release valve so that is what this warning is all about. Next is from this label. Here at the back it says with, with one under caution. Please be careful with the hot, the hot steam when lifting the steamer basket out. So let's say you're cooking something and you are using a steamer basket. And then the cooking is done. And now you open the the lid, and the warning says that be careful when lifting up the basket because it's possible that on this area there will be hot steam. So be wary about grabbing the the steamer basket. Also, this metal part, the inner part, is also hot as well as the steamer basket. So exercise caution when lifting up, um, just make sure that you're just touching the silicone, right? The handle of the steamer basket is provided with the silicone, so you'll be able to lift it up though it's hot. But again, be cautious, uh, take precautionary measure when lifting up the basket from the pot. It also says, Please check over your package to make sure that it is in a good condition and all parts of the products are complete and damaged. I've done that. I've checked all the parts and uh, I have the complete package. I mean, all the all the items that are supposed in the package, I found them. Um, to make sure that the pot is in good condition, that is what we're going to find out later when we do the get initial test run. And there's another label, warning label here. It says, make sure the heating element is free from grease and debris. Do not leave food on the heating element. And where's that heating element? Now, this is the inner pot. The heating element is actually this plate. This plate, the bottom where the inner pot sits on, this is the heating element. So make sure that this plate is free from grease or any food debris. So all you have to do is just wipe it dry, make sure that there's nothing on it. As well as the sides of the pot, make sure that there's no grease and food debris. So just clean it, wipe it dry. Or better is uh, we shake the pot upside down just to make the any debris to fall off. And lastly, we have this label or card that says, read packaging warning cards and warning labels. Remove all packaging materials and removable warning cards from the cooker and accessories. Read important safeguards in the manual before using the pressure cooker. Do not place hands, face, or unprotected skin over the steam release valve. This is what I've mentioned earlier. Do not force lid. Do not force the lid open when float valve is still up. Okay, what does it mean? Uh, when the pressure is when the cooking when the cooking is on and uh, the the process is not done yet, so there's pressure inside the pot. You would know that there's pressure inside the pot because this one, this is the float valve. This will 
this will rise up it will come up like this when there's pressure inside because the pressure tends to go out and that pressure push the float valve up this is the float valve so when the float valve is still up just like this do not open the lid let the pressure be released first from the inside of the pot and that is indicated that will be indicated when the float valve starts to go down when you see that the float valve is down then the steam has been released from the inside of the pot and that's when you can open the lid of the pot and also it says here when doing the initial test run fill the inner pot with three cups of water for details see the manual and uh, this is the measuring cup so we'll fill the inner pot with water three cups of this of water for the initial test run so this will be my setup for the instant pot before you do your own setup, I advise that you read everything from this user manual, especially the important safeguards, which can be found from page 2 and 3 and 4. And to apply uh, the important uh, safeguards, uh, number 23, which is uh, found on page 3 says that the instant pot is intended for countertop use only keep the appliance on a stable heat resistant platform do not place anything that may block the vents on the bottom of the appliance so this is an ideal place for the instant pot because this is of marble it's stable this counter is very stable and since it's marble so it's a heat resistant platform and it says, do not place on anything that may block the vents on the bottom of the appliance. So I have nothing under the bottom of the pot. It's actually the ventilation for the pot. I have nothing on the countertop that would block the vents. Precaution or important safeguard number four says, do not use near water or flame please keep out of direct sunlight again this is the perfect position for the for the instant pot because this position is the point that is farthest from the water supply so we have to keep the instant pot dry it says precaution number four says do not use near water or flame now to address the electrical shock hazard warning on page 5 of the user manual let's take a look page 5 on the user manual it's this page page 5 and this warning this warning says electrical shock hazard plug into a grounded three prong three prong outlet do not remove ground prong. Do not use an adapter. Do not use an extension cord. Failure to follow these instructions can result in death, fire, or electrical shock. Uh, this is what I'm going to address next. The Lux Mini is fitted with a polarized plug. This is the plug of the Lux Mini. This plug is polarized. As you can see, this plug has two prongs. One, two, right? The second prong is wider. If you look closely, you will see that the tip of this prong is broader than the tip of the other prong. So this plug can, can only be inserted one way to a receptacle that is polarized. This polarized plug works as a safety mechanism to prevent electric shock if you touch an energized part of the appliance if something goes wrong. What is that energized 
part of the appliance. Uh, those are the metal parts. Those are the only parts that could be energized. So if something goes wrong, it's possible that you can get shocked by touching this metal part here, this body, as well as this part. And as a safety measure for that, they have made uh, this plug polarized as that polarization will prevent that from happening. So this instant pot is a safe device or safe appliance to use because they have provided such a measure. Actually, the instant pot has 10 safety measures. They have, um, they have studied a every scenario that can happen or that can, uh, everything that can go wrong. That's what makes up those 10 uh, safety measures. And since this appliance is a US made or I mean I think this is China made but this appliance will work only for 110 120 volt and our electrical system in this country is to 2240 so we need a converter to supply 110 or 120 to this appliance because if if we just plug this to a, to a receptacle outlet that provides 220 or 240 volts then this appliance will not work. It's not gonna explode, but it's gonna break the fuse inside. There's a fuse inside this. One of the feature of the instant pot is that if the supply is too much, then it's gonna break the fuse. So the instant pot will not work. Now, for us to be able to use a 110 or 120 appliance, we have to use a step-down converter, which is what you see here. This is a step-down converter because uh, this device will convert a 240 volt down to 110. So the input volt for this device is 220 or 240. And then the output will be 110 or 120. I mean, actually, the output on this receptacle or this outlet is 110. And for this one, it's 110. And for the other one, is 100. So this transformer has three receptacles uh, for a lower voltage. I have two 110s and one 100 volts. So I have two outlets that I can use for this appliance. And as you can see, this transformer has polarized receptacles. It's clear to see that this slot here, the vertical slot, is wider than this vertical slot. Likewise, this slot is wider than this, and this slot is wider than this. So all these three receptacles are, or outlets are polarized. Now let's check if the plug of the pot would fit into the outlet on the transformer. Uh, this plug is a polarized plug. Not all polarized receptacles could fit any uh, polarized plug. You have to try if it would fit. I have a regulator with a 110 uh, outlet and it's polarized but it could not accommodate this plug because none of the two slots for that outlet is wide enough for this prong. So what I did is to be able to get the right transformer, I had to make a template which is as wide as this prong and then uh, check for a transformer using that template, see if it would see if that template would fit into um, an outlet of a transformer and I got this one and it and any all these three receptacles would accommodate this there's no way that you can uh, wrongly insert this plug as this plug would only fit one way to this receptacle and besides the wider prong would take care of that because if you plug it the wrong way it will not fit because the wider 
will not go through an outer slot. So the wider must go to the wider slot. And it's clear to see that this is the wider slot and this is the narrower. And this is the wider prong. So the wider prong should go into the wider slot. And you should be able to follow that because that would uh if you are if you are not able to plug it the right way then you have defeated the purpose of uh making this plug polarized because actually this uh is a safety feature uh it is a feature that would uh, minimize the risk of electric shock so now let's try it the transfer the, the transformer is not plugged to the outlet yet i'm just trying the plug of the pot see if it would really fit to this there right it fits although it requires some effort to do that but that's good and then the other one there right okay how about this one okay i don't have to try the third one because it's 100 it's lower than 110 Besides, I have two outlets that I can use for the pot. Of any of these would be good. So, as far as connectivity is concerned, this transformer fits for this uh, instant pot. Now that I have discussed the uh, connection or the connectivity between the instant pot and the transformer, which is half of the setup, now I'm going to discuss the connectivity between the transformer and the wall outlet let's take a look at the plug of the transformer uh, it this is a three prong plug one two three this is designed so that electricity can be safely supplied to the transformer this kind of plug would provide uh, a safety measure for the use of transformer the third prong which is this one grounds the electricity to protect anyone who uses a metal encased appliance from electrical shock since this transformer is encased in metal that's the reason why they have provided a ground uh, wiring for this transformer so that in any case of electrical fault or if anything goes wrong you would be protected from electric shock should you touch the casing as during electrical surge, it's, it's possible that this casing, which is metal, would be energized. And that could be prevented uh, by applying grounding on this appliance or transformer. So this transformer has safety feature against electric shock or against electrical surge. Unfortunately, the wall outlet, which is this one, it's not grounded as it has two holes only. One, two. One, two. This receptacle has two outlets actually, one and two. But each outlet has only two holes or only accommodates a plug that has two prongs. This kind of outlet doesn't have an extra ground wire to protect anyone from possible surge of electricity which can cause electric shock if one happens to touch the metal casing. Of course, electrical surge can cause damage to an appliance. So by providing this grounding feature to this appliance, uh, this appliance is supposed to be protected from electrical surge. But if the wall outlet is not grounded then we won't be able to use the the safety feature that is provided for the client uh, because the wall outlet is not grounded so check your wall outlets if there are three holes then they are grounded receptacles and you don't have to worry about electric shock or getting electrocuted when an electric surge happen or if something goes Wrong. But if your wall outlets show two holes, then they are ungrounded, just like this one. And there's a risk of electric surge. 
Um, electrical surges do happen, but um, as a safety measure, just in case it happens, never touch any metal part of the casing of the appliance. Now we will proceed to getting started, which is can be found on page 12 of the user manual. The first step is read warning cards and warning labels. I've shown you that before, those lab labels that give us warning. So you read them, remove all packaging materials and removable warning cards from the cooker and accessories. I have removed them. So as you can see, uh, I don't have any card or label inside the inner pot and also inside the pot except for this sticker which we can leave it. You don't have to remove this. Then item number two says clean the inner pot lid and accessories with water detergent before the first use. I've done that uh, on the first video. I've cleaned the inner pot, I've washed dish, wipe it dry, I've also washed the lid and wipe it dry on all the accessories like the anti-block shield, even the ceiling ring, I've removed it, cleaned it separately and then put it back. And then item number three says install the condensation collector. It's this one actually. You should see this uh, inside the package. But this one is only uh, available for Lux Mini and Lux 80 models. Other models don't require this. So install the condensation collector at the rear of the cooker by aligning the top of the collector with the guys on the cooker and pressing. So which part of the cooker is that? You have to turn, I have to turn this because it's actually here. There's a portion here that extends below this line and that's where you should align the this condensation uh, collector. All you have to do is align it this way. This side comes in contact to the outer surface of the pot. As you can see the curvature. It follows the curvature of the pot. So all you have to do is I'll move it closer. So and then push it there it's already in place the condensation collector is already in place of course to remove it just simply put it out put it back there so that's the condensation collector it's already installed and then item number four says place the steam release handle on the lid okay this is the lid or the cover and the uh, release handle is actually this one which is for sealing and for venting and it's loose which is what it is supposed to be it should not be locked in or tight in this position it should be loose so you can easily turn it to this for venting and put it back for sealing and also you can switch it to the other side for venting that means to release the air pressure I mean to release the pressure inside the cooker I did not remove this one so I don't have to worry about item number four as it's as the steam release handle is already in place and then there is a note there on page 12 that says the steam release handle does not lock tight into the lid but will, but will fit loosely that's what I said just earlier that it should fit loosely, right? So it's really loose. It should not lock tight. Okay. So we're done. Um, following the instruction on page 12, page 12. 
Now we move to the next page, page 13. And it says, before using instant pot, first is to remove the lead, hold the handle, turn the lead clock counterclockwise and lift. So as you can see, how to remove the lead on, and to put it back. Here on this side, you see an instruction. If you turn it to this direction, which is actually a clockwise direction, that is to close the lid. Now, if you turn it to this direction, which is a counterclockwise direction, and that will open the lid. So, and how to open and close the lid, you have to hold the lid on its handle. This is the handle, so you all have to just put your fingers inside. So you hold it like this, right? And then I will turn it clockwise to close it. So that's closed, right? See, I can't open it, I can't pull it. But if I turn it counterclockwise to the other side, now, now I'm able to open the lid. So that's how you should open the lid. And to close the lid, all you have to do is, see there's a, a pin that locks the lid. That pin is this one. So to close it, or to put it back, all you have to do is align this corner, this corner, to this corner, to this corner, align this corner, to this corner, so it should look like this, there, then turn clockwise to close it, See, now it's closed, I can't open it, so item number one says remove the lid, that means I'll have to turn the lid to this direction, it's a counterclockwise, counterclockwise. So again, I'll hold it this way, and then turn it counterclockwise. There. So I have opened it. And then item number two says, remove the inner pot from the cooker. And this is the inner pot. I'm removing it. Item number three says, Add food and liquids to the inner pot as the recipe directs, but we are not going to do this, so I'm, we're, we're going to skip number three. As uh, this video is just for uh, the initial test run, so we're not cooking, we're not... Now we can skip that and proceed to item number four, four. And it says, wipe the outside of the inner pot dry. Make sure there's no food. Make sure there's no food, de food debris on the heating element. So two things. Wipe the outside of the inner pot. This is actually this side. Right? So we are told to or instructed to wipe it dry. So I'm going to wipe it dry. Wipe the outside surface of the inner pot as well as the bottom. This is the bottom. is the one that we'll have in contact. Uh, with the heating element of the cooker. Then the other thing is make sure there's no food debris on the heating element. Like what I said earlier, the display is the heating element. So we are instructed to wipe it dry. So now I'm wiping it. And I'm checking the inside to make sure there's no grease or any food debris. But this, but actually, it should be clean because I haven't used it yet, right? But just in case, be sure we have to wipe it dry, make sure that it is clean. And then item number five says, put the inner pot back into the cooker. Rotate sl slightly to ensure that it is seated correctly. So now I'm placing back the inner pot inside the cooker. Rotate it slightly to make sure that it is seated correctly, right? 
Now item number six says make sure the ceiling rack is completely set in the groove on the inside of the ceiling ring. Okay, here's the lid. The the ceiling ring rack is this metal metal wire that you would see. All right, this is the ceiling ring rack. And the uh, ceiling ring is this material, the one that looks like plastic. If you uh, if you have watched the first video, I have removed this because that's what the manual tells us to do: remove it and clean it. So and then I have replaced it. I have put it back in place. And uh, item number six says that ensure there is no def deformation on the ceiling ring wrap. And there's no deformation on the ceiling ring rack. So that means the ceiling ring is properly in place. Item number six says make sure the ceiling ring rack is completely set in the groove on the inside of the ceiling ring. Now this is the inside of the lid. And this is the ceiling ring, the plastic thing. And the metal that is place within the ceiling ring is what we call the ceiling ring rack so this is the ceiling ring rack of course the ceiling ring rack is in perfect uh, form because we haven't used it i haven't used it before so it should be okay it's not deformed there's no def deformation on the ceiling ring rack as well as the ceiling ring it's in good condition and i have only removed it uh, for cleaning last time so it's now in place. So we're done following item number six. Item number seven instructs us to place the lid back, but we are not doing this because we are going to proceed to initial test run. So in this case, we're going to the next page. And that's on page 14. And page 14, there's, there are notes there. The first one is make sure the steam release valve, float valve, and anti-block shield are clean and free of debris. Now those valves, they are accessories of the lid. Um, the steam release valve is actually this thing. It's clean. I've washed this thing, this whole thing are on the first video, you have seen it. And this is the float valve. The float valve is in good condition because you can raise it and lower it. Same thing with the steam release valve. It's in good condition because it's loose. It's not locked tight. And the anti-block shield is also in position. This is not loose. It's actually fixed and locked tight, but it's clean. So I have followed the note there that says make sure the steam release valve, float valve, and the anti-block shield are clean and free from debris. Then the next um, note there says after putting the lid on, make sure the float valve on top of the lid drops down. So this is what you should see when you have placed the lid on the cooker. It should drop down. If it's not, if it's like this, then there's something that prevents it or it's it gets stuck. So it should drop down. The only time that this float valve will rise up is when you are cooking or when you are using the pot and there's pressure inside. As the pressure inside the pot will bring the float up. Now when the pressure is released, it will bring the float down. So for the initial test run, the first thing in the list is add three measuring cups of water into the inner pot, about 20 fluid ounces or 750 milliliters. Let's use the measuring cup that is provided. This is the measuring cup that they have provided. Here the gauge width 40, 80, 120, 160. And this should be the milliliter volume. So, 
to add three measuring cups, that would only end up a total of 160 milliliter for each cup times three. That would be 480 milliliters. But they have provided a figure of 25 fluid ounces or 750 ml milliliter. So in this case, I'm not gonna follow, I'm not gonna use the three measuring cups of water, but I will use the volume, the milliliter that was given or that is given and that would be 750. So I will, ha I will end up with um, 160 times 4 and that would be 640 plus 110. So I'm gonna have uh, 4 at 160 ml and then 1 at 120. So I'm gonna get water now. So now I'm drawing water. This is the first 160. So 160. Another 160. That brings us to 320. Another 160. So it would be 480. So this is the fourth one. And that's a total of 640 as 160 times 4 is 640. And since the required is 750 ml, so I need 110 more. So I'll just fill up to 120. The inner pot is not filled, of course, definitely. It's just like uh, maybe around one fifth of the depth of the pot. The manual tells us that uh, we do we should not fill the inner pot up to two thirds of its volume. So this is pretty safe. And then twist it to make sure that the inner pot is properly seated. Step three instructs us to close the lid. So now I'm gonna put the lid and here's the direction to close it you have to we'll have to turn to counterclockwise we'll have to turn this lid counterclockwise to close it okay here i'll show you how to close the lid now to close the lid i'm going to align this corner of the cover or the lid to this corner so here we go i'm gonna hold the cover or lid this way as this is the lead handle or cover handle and then there I've already positioned this corner to align to this corner but it's not loose yet so to close the lead we have to turn the cover or the lead to counter to to counterclockwise as this is the direction to close it so i'm going to turn the lid cover to the right or counterclockwise and observe how this pin go there you see the snap sound that closes the the pot the manual also tell us to uh, turn the steam release handle, which is this one, to ceiling position, and this is the ceiling position. There, that's that. This word reads ceiling. So we have to turn the steam release handle to that position, uh, to this position. So this is the ceiling position. Turning it here would be the venting. That means to release the pressure or tur turning it to the other side which is also the venting another venting position would release the pressure but we don't want to release the pressure we, we need the pressure to steam I mean to boil the water right because we're going to steam the water so we have to turn it to the ceiling position there and it snaps there, okay Now step 3 of the initial test run tells us to press the steam button 
and here's the panel of the pot and here we see programs cooking programs like for this one press this button if you are going to prepare soup or broth and this one is for cooking meat and stew this one is for cooking egg this one is for salting this one if you are if you want to cook rice and here's porridge porridge steam and slow cook and this is the program that we are going to select later uh, as we are going to boil the water so this is just for initial test run and that's what the instruction tells us to do here the instruction number three tells us to press the steam button but let's hold it for a while as we don't have electrical connection yet but before we do the electrical connection let's take a look at this guide reference guide that was provided for insta pot use and let's look at the bottom part under the cooking program operations since what we are going to do for the initial test run is steaming so we can follow this program right i mean this flow chart once the electrical connection is provided or meaning the transformer has been plugged to the um, wall outlet and the uh, instant pot is plugged to the transformer we should be able to see this display on the control panel which says off and since we have already closed the lid all we have to do is select the steam program and make sure that the release i mean the steam release handle is at ceiling position then we'll uh, then we'll adjust the key or let's just wait for it to turn on and then we'll adjust this plus or minus button to two minutes because that is what the initial test run tells us to do as the initial test run item number three or instruction number three says press the steam button and press the plus or minus key keys to adjust the time to two minutes so you can use this program now to provide power i'll make sure that the transformer is at switch off mode and this is the switch off mode for the transformer it's already off and then i'll insert the polarized plug of the pot into the polarized receptacle of 110 volts on the transformer and i'll be using this outlet so again the wider slot is the one on the right and the wider prong is this one on the right so now i'm gonna plug it there so now we have the pot connected to the transformer and the transformer will supply 110 volts to the pot which is the operating uh, power for the pot the only thing we have to do is to provide electricity to the transformer and that will uh, and this outlet will provide us that power for the transformer but since the power from this outlet is 220 volts then 220 volts will enter into this transformer and uh, that will be confer converted to 110 and that 110 volt will come out here and supply power to the, top, to the pot so we need to plug the transformer to that wall outlet but before we do that take a look at the plug of the transformer it's a three prong plug one two three the third one is actually the grounding since the plug is a three prong plug which would not fit into the wall outlet with two holes right i will be using this outlet as this one is kind of defective i'll be using this one but this outlet or receptacle has two holes only and that 
and this plug will not fit into that as this will prevent it from uh, fitting this plug into that outlet it is not advisable to take this off as this is a safety feature for the transformer in case something wrong happened with the transformer uh, you'll be protected using this transformer and also this transformer will be protected although that feature will not work because this outlet is ungrounded but we have to keep this because who knows you might be uh, you might you might upgrade or your wall outlet or I might upgrade to uh, ground to grounded receptacle then I would be able to use this safety feature so for now, I'll just skip it. Now to be able to to be able to make this fit into the wall outlet, then I'll have to use an adapter. So check your wall outlet. If your wall outlet is uh, has three holes, then you don't need this anymore. So here, of course, these two blades goes into this. And this prong, the round one, will fit into this. There. It's snug tight, it's not loose, so it should be okay. Before I plug the transformer to the wall outlet, uh, we have to take precautionary measures regarding the AC transformer. The transformer is placed in this box and it has these uh, safety tips it reads check the wattage requirement for your equipment from nameplate and specs to determine the correct wattage and which transformer to be used locks me requires 700 watts it needs 700 watts to operate the transformer this transformer can produce 1000 watts so this has enough power for this pot we should be able to make uh, the pot run actually since this is this has more wattage since this can provide 1000 watts and this only needs 700 watts therefore I can still use another appliance I can still use another appliance that can run for about uh, less than 300 watts. So if I have another appliance, another 110 appliance that runs for 200 watts, then I can still use it and plug it on this outlet. As long as the total number of watts required by each appliance doesn't sum up to 1000 watts, so this should be okay. So check out your transformer, make sure that the transformer that you're going to buy would have enough wattage or has more allowance for for your pot if your pot is bigger than this one like at this pot which is a six quart pot I think its requirement is each wattage is 1000 watts then this will not maybe this will not be a good one for for that part that requires 1000 watts to operate you need to have an allowance so maybe if there is a transformer that can provide 1500 watts then I think that would be okay and to continue um, if there is any humming sound or vibration disconnect the power cord immediately from the wall outlet do not operate your transformer over the maximum capacity so if I'm going to use only this appliance on this transformer then I'm not gonna be overloading the transformer or I won't be operating the transformer over the maximum capacity that's what I'm gonna do I'll just dedicate this transformer for this part just in case to be sure to be on the safety side so if there's any humming sound or vibration disconnect the power cord immediately so if I observe that the transformer vibrates or I hear humming sound 
I have to immediately disconnect the power cord from this outlet. But this transformer has safety feature. It says in case of overload, circuit breaker will trip. So this has a fuse inside. So in case of overload, that fuse inside this transformer will split and so it will switch off. And um, since they have provided two extra fuse, then I should be able to use this transformer next time if it trips. So when it trips, next uh, note says correct the overload and turn on the circuit breaker again. If not in use, switch off the transformer. So if I'm not, so if, let's say I'm done using the the instant pot, I'm done with my cooking. Then I can just leave the connection between the transformer and the instant pot. All I have to do is just switch off the switch on the transformer. So this will be permanent. This connection between the transformer and the pot will be permanent. I only have to switch off the transformer when I'm done cooking. But of course, you can also on the instant pot side you can also stop the operation by pressing this button that says keep warm cancel and that will end the operation or the program and then to stop the current going into the instant pot then i just switch off the transformer and then the final um then the final note says unplug the transformer if it will not be used for a long time so if you are not going to use your trans I mean, if you're not going to cook for a while then don't forget to unplug the transformer but as a practice i will unplug the transformer every now and then so i'm going to plug it if i'm going to cook when i'm done of course i will have to press cancel first and then switch off and then i'll unplug the transformer for, for safety one more thing before i plug uh, the transformer to the wall outlet you would notice that this cord is about to drape over the edge of this counter and if you are reading the manual under this warning it tells you to keep appliance and cord away from children never drape cord over edge of the count edge of counter so we'll have to keep this within the counter because the problem is especially if there are children right if it's hanging or draped over the edge like that and you have a toddler more likely that toddler are going is going to grab this outlet I mean this cord and if it's running that could really be dangerous so as a practice, it would be better to tap this somewhere here, right? So that the chances of anyone getting entangled with a cable or with a cord or a toddler pulling the cord or cable would be zero at all. So for me, it's very safe. I don't I can actually leave this here like that as I don't have any kid here but again as a practice who knows right I might accidentally put my hand inside here I mean, or my arm and then walk away right so I would be dragging the whole thing as I walk away so uh, as a safety feature I mean as a pr safety practice I'm gonna bring this over here just to make sure that no part of the cable is past the edge of the counter. This outlet, by the way, is just nice because it, in the user manual on page 5, it says never use outlet below counter because if your outlet is below the counters, let's say you have an outlet somewhere here or your outlet is lower than the top of the counter or maybe your outlet is on the other side but it's lower than the top of the counter 
and then you have that is that kids might pull the plug or might touch the outlet and if you have an outlet placed at a lower part of the counter then the cable would be draping over the edge of the counter and that uh, there's a risk for anyone getting entangled with the cable next thing to do is the plug the cord into the wall outlet so we only have to connect this one plug this into the wall outlet but I want to make sure first that the transformer switches off and then I'll switch it on now you see the off now that tells us that the um, instant pot is on standby mode now to continue to the initial test run all you have to do is press steam button and this is one then after that we press the plus or minus key this one to adjust the timer so I'll press steam and since it shows 10 then I'll press the minus key to lower it down to 2 minutes now that's set to 2 minutes then we have to wait for 10 seconds for the preheating cycle to start now it's on so it's starting now the instant pot is starting to boil the water inside all we have to do is wait for 2 minutes when you're cooking don't leave the instant pot you have to stay and watch what's happening especially if it's doing an initial test run just to see if it's working or if it's functioning well and also based from the uh, safety guard mentioned in the box of step down transformer you watch for humming sound that would come from the transformer as well as the if there if the transformer is vibrating so when those two things happen or any of those two things happen we have to immediately unplug the uh, transformer let's just wait for two minutes i think so. so it's working from the manual on page 14 it says the program will begin after a few minutes when working pressure is switched i think it's building the pressure the cooker will beep and automatically switch to keep warm mode so when it's done you'll hear beep sound and then it automatically switches to keep warm mode if the auto auto keep warm function is on for now let's just wait we can end the program now it's off then switch off the Plug. there the transformer uh, was able to provide a power supply to the to the pot because it switched on now that's the initial test run now let's check the the water inside I'll open the lid Yeah, it's hot. There's uh, the water is uh, hot, so it's working. <clears throat> and here's the proof that it's working. See the steam on the on the inside of the lid. Thank you for watching.